Turn back or die! Gandu! Stop running! <laughs> This stuff is everywhere. I don't like the look of it. We should be careful. Sturdy. you'll see, I expect. These caves will be your too. this place for anything of note. If anyone tries to interfere, crush them.
What'd you find? Do you think you'll do any better? The caverns are deep and dangerous, Jedi. There is more you do not know. <laughs> I bet Z can get the data off this disk. I don't think we're making it back.
all the way down here trying to reach through the stars. We all must do our part, Padawan, no matter our place. I suppose. Uva. Hey, what's waiting beneath the surface this time? These strange climbs harbor a most mysterious resident, the Vesed Lucker. Eh, they love to nestle into the cozier reaches of the sea, but they're need too cozy for Scuba Steph. Nice, I think. to me. Could I trust you in a, a tale? Uh, where did we end? Ah, yes. The monstrous Captain Wet, his crew and myself, fled aboard the pirate schooner of the filthy Zephyrs. Well, fast as the morning thaw, I could tell something was off. Wanyak, who would be looking me in the eye? Oh, and a dreadful stench was a brew in his rotten beard. An auger of fate most ill. Wanyak took the helm. And with landing claws away, we flew to deep space, putting a few lifetimes between us and those pirates. We found ourselves a field of the Parlemian trade route. As soon as the captain took his hand off the yoke, he put it on his harpoon and gave me a look, like a half-starved tuka-cat iron sprat. Scurva, snarled the vile captain. You've gone as soft as an oyster's navel. If I couldn't trust you to spare a quarrel with their blaster in your mouth, I could have trust you to skewer the great goober fish. I, my hesitance to pull the trigger, had me undone. In spite of my most rapid pleas, the captain jettisoned wee Scuva in an escape pod. The last thing I saw was his dread smile, crooked like a beeman's backbone. And so, my time aboard the grapnel met a briny end. Sitting alone in a pod, in deep space, but nothing but a tank of old cod and gash. I'll tell you more later, lad. The despair. Oh, the stench. It's enough to set my stomach a churn to this very day.
Can I get a stim, buddy? I bet Z can get the data off this disk. Nice find. Let's take this back to Z. The public must have used this to reach the surface. I don't think they fell through a hole in the roof every time, buddy. Let's stop for a moment. Keep moving, buddy. Let's head out. We're locked out. What? Oh no! You see that? Sure, Z can decrypt this for us. I wonder if these started growing after the Republic. Either way, good for us. What was that? 
Oh no! You're the best. Need to open this. No, we couldn't find him. But he murdered Jedi. He must answer for his crimes. I understand. You're following your code, and I am following mine. I owe him everything. But you... You, I owe nothing. studying the growths here, as well as more research on Kobo Manor. They really found this whole planet fascinating. Must have hated having to leave it all behind. Come on, let's go.
Isn't it a little dark down there for fishing? A true fisher doesn't rely on the sun to do the seeing. A true fisher fishes with the mind. Sink your eyes on this. You're asking yourself, how in the deep did old Scuba know where the fishy was hiding? But what you don't know is that the bar of hoodfish always travels northward. How does it always travel north? Well, it, uh, you, you see, north, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a relative, uh, to find a bump to dwell my way down. But a true fisher knows that a pocket full of luck is more important than some cod migration pattern. Now for a story, if you've the time. So, Scuva, back to your story. Were you actually marooned in deep space by Captain Wet? Aye, lad. There I sat, tummy a rumble, gazing out at the void, my somber reflection staring back from the porthole. Was it hours? Years? Ugh, neither would faze me. But I do recall this. After a term most interminable, there she was, like a, a bowsprit cutting through a crest. The great space whale, still sporting the grapnel's imprint on her side, emerged from a parted void. Aye, even now it brings the salt to my eyes. Her great blubbery undulations toss me pod through the stars like a goose-winged skiff. The stars swirled about like a hundred thousand fishes, until suddenly I saw a planet below. There my pod crashed, and there I was rescued by kindly locals. I had been saved by this marvelous creature from the depth of space. I tried searching for her. Alas, to no avail. She eluded me for years before I packed my satchel and headed home for Sakavi Tar. Most did they believe what I'd seen. They say she was not but the terminal spasm of a starving salt's brain. But I know what I saw, lad. I know what I saw. Of course, when I returned home, things were not as I remembered them. But that'd be a tale for another time.